for some sort of spiritual wandering. The literal fucking first day she is gone. In the morning, Cirilla tries to blame Lenny for Finn's death and verbally abuses her all day. Like, makes her physically uncomfortable to high hell. Um, corners her many times with threats of physical violence. Very much, you know, Red X. This is essentially an abusive relationship. To the point that at night, she cornered her in her own bed with, like, you know, hey, 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 I'm going to hurt you. <laughs> um, which Lenny... Oh, was... accurate. <laughs> Actually, yeah. yeah. Lenny was absolutely not down with being bullied like this and argued back uh saying that you know finn died because he was useless emotions got high cirilla said uh and i quote oh man cynthia would be sad if you died because we put a lot of money into you but i uh, don't worry i won't make you die uh, it'll be worse than that and lenny essentially uh, lenny essentially said do it but see you won't <laughs> And Cirilla's not a bitch, right? Yeah. So, uh, Cirilla attacked her, and I remember you rolled max damage. Yeah, I think I did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Holy yeah. shit! Which uh, caused uh, Sissel to come barging in, like, from her sleep, as Cirilla had, like, Lenny pinned on the ground and cu cutting into her back. You guys had a intense heated argument back and forth with Cecil defending Lenny saying Finn died he didn't pick us he was useless look at this rat over here who has survived more things than she should have and she's still here she's in she's an investment she has value Finn didn't and you talked Shirella down and Lenny walked away being like I'm not useless yay which is really sad now that I say that out loud. Hey, that's a that's a dub. All it's right? a dub, yeah. It's a dub. Um, I blame this entire encounter encounter on uh, and Cynthia not being there. No, yeah, literally, that was the funniest thing. Is that the like you said it after the after the the mental breakdown talk was over? You were like, "Man, sir, Cynthia's gone one day, and we start killing each other." She was the clue. <laughs> <laughs> Which was really fucking funny because <laughs> she really was though. Um, with with that, Cirilla did calm down and got that out of her. Um, Sissel also decided to can't make up, you know, carving into your coworkers back trying to claim them as your own plaything, But she does genuinely try to make it up to Lenny during the break. To the point where, like, they did gardening together and stuff. Because you guys also upgraded the base, that's true. You guys got a spa and everything. So you, you tried to make her feel appreciated. Crazy, we actually became friends after this. Yeah, that is true, it is crazy. Look where abuse takes you guys. That's how it works, right? Yep. Sissel tried yeah, I think I'm going to use this in my personal life. Yeah. Sissel tried to get some new team members, but those interviews fell through. Um, two out of the three of them weren't even combatants to begin with, and out of the one that was, filled, <laughs> filled everybody with so much cringe that Amazing. Cynthia beat his ass so hard it made him question his faith. <laughs> From the top shelf. From the top shelf. Bro, I think the, the best part was it came from Cynthia, who yeah. we just said is pure and probably like the glue of the team. And Cynthia was just like, I don't like this bitch. <laughs> and took it upon herself to ruin him. Admittedly, he was like, oh, yo, you have a heretic on your team. How are you allowing oh, yeah, he, that? He did say that? Point at augmented arm. He did say that. It's yeah. my arm. So, oh, yeah, and he was talking to me like, Yo, hey, what's up? Let's be, uh, let's be, uh, racist together. <laughs> let's go <laughs> And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what? You should, we should, we should have you two fight. <laughs> you really, you can definitely prove your dominance. Mm -hmm. During, uh, during those days, um, Cecil 
with with Cecil doing whatever she was doing, uh, Cirilla, you know, took it upon herself to try and make breakfast. Nobody liked it. So instead, it was time to just order breakfast every day from a place known as Bagel Realm. And Yo, on purpose, bagel. Cirilla kept messing up Cecil's breakfast order every single time to the point that it made her go fucking insane. Uh, specifically, she went so postal that she uh, arrived to Bagel Realm and the owners were so nice and understanding and caring to her, despite the fact she was acting like a Karen, that she had a small mental breakdown as she learned that Cirillo was the one who was trolling her this whole time. Gaslighting you. Yeah. So Bagel Realm was forgiven and they deliver your breakfast every single morning now. Because you 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 learned how to make a no. This is the order. Don't change it. <laughs> so Cirilla was no longer allowed to to troll you. Also during that time, you learned you specifically Cecil learned new combat skills and learned some cantrips and a spell. You also tried to call home, talk to your mom, see how things are going. Frame one, you were told to fuck off, and the call was hung on you, and you were like, "Yeah, what did I expect?" Uh. September 13th, Cynthia finally comes back home, acting like a relic hunter, and she explained what she found and why she left. This is where she divulged that her family had ties to a cult, but she's not part of that lifestyle anymore. Um, since you guys have been away from home for a long time during your second mission, you decide to stay in district for the foreseeable future. Um... Which is perfect, because you guys had a job to do. You looked into a few syndicate issues within the district. This is why I had a meeting uh, with you describing the situation. Uh, Isidora and Julia uh, guided you through the slideshows explaining the whole situation. Uh, they're friends with Sands, who is the leader of the Street Lamp office, who are your compatriots. So... You know, every, everyone's friends with each other. We're all co-workers and friends, essentially. Uh, you guys, during that time, finalizing things, Cynthia came home. First thing she does is to do some work and uh, finds this lost cat. Now, every single time you guys had a downtime and did some minor work, whether that be Lenny or Cirilla or whoever, there's always this job for this missing lost cat. And it's always the same fucking cat. So Cynthia figured, ah, I'm going to take it home and socialize it with our pets and it'll learn not to run away. So you took it home where this brand new unknown cat had to interact with Cirilla's cat who longs for adventure and the demon sheep who uh, you have not fed but it seems to just find food to eat. It seems like it eats anything. And later that day you guys found it uh, with its uh, face all stained in red and you guys were like let me fucking read this verbatim um where is it Pulling the court documents. Yeah, I pull out the court, like literally the court documents. After He's pulling out receipts. After okay. many minor issues of finding this lost cat, Cynthia took it home to try and stop it from running away uh, until they contacted their owner. But it disappeared in your office. The mystery of the lost cat was never solved. Uh, however, it seems sheep had found strawberries and ate them. Nothing out of here, man. C what a Cir smart Cir animal. Cirilla was like, oh, that must be strawberries. Cynthia is like, oh, like you said, I actually, <laughs> what a smart animal. And uh, Sissel, you made, no, you guys didn't buy strawberries. You don't have strawberries. Where did this thing find strawberries? But you didn't, you, you didn't have time to think. You had to prepare for this next job. And we left that at that. Um, I hope that cat comes back. Yeah, that cat's going to come back. Yeah, no, for sure. It's somewhere in your office. You don't know where. So you guys learned that grade 9 and 8 offices are disappearing. They're being attacked. 
by uh, syndicates, but there's also rumors of this urban myth, uh, the library, which keep in mind urban myth means the uh, deadly deadliness of a potential out, uh, encounter or threat. Uh, kind of like the threat system tiering from One Punch Man, if you are familiar with that. So you're told that some people are disappearing to this urban myth of this library, uh, which is uh, literally the very same that you've been working with for, uh, in the past. And it seems that more and more people are being invited and they are uh, dying in droves. And you're not sure how many people have actually survived or and are in the same situation that you are in. Because um, it seems you guys survived your encounters without issue. Uh, it seems other people are not so lucky. But you don't reveal any of this information. You're keeping it to your chest. Uh, you guys are tasked with stopping this gang expansion so it doesn't threaten the posh nest in your district. They could care less about what happens outside of that. Poor tax brackets be damned, but if that starts coming over to the nest, that's issues, and you're stopping that before it becomes an issue. But Sissel, you get a call from Yun, and you're told to go meet him at a local park. It's very formal, operator to operator, in front of a chess board. Neither of you brought chess pieces, they're supposed to provide chess pieces in the park. Of course, there's no chess pieces there, though. So you guys are just awkwardly staring at an empty chess board. Um, this is why the city's in the state it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We live in a society. <laughs> um, but it's very formal. It's very candy or operator to operator. Uh, he's leaving the district because he's uh, he's exhausted what little he can gain from this place. And after one final attempt of getting Sissel to join him, uh, he wishes her well, wishes M.O.M. well, and in good faith, hands over a cigar uh, from his own home district, as well as info regarding the weaknesses of the gangs you guys are going to be going up against. Um, because it turns out, one of the, subs one of the sub subordinate gangs that um, are working with or subjugated by the stray dogs, which is the major threat, used to be part of Hook Office, and Yun had info on them. So he hands that over to you guys, and, uh, you know, camera cut to him walking off into the distance. A crowd starts covering and obscuring his vision, uh, his, like, silhouette, and he's just gone. So now it's just... Uh, it leaves M.O.M. Oh, being the second highest uh, grade office. What? What did I give him? What did you give him? Yeah, give him a signed baseball card. Hell yeah, I did. <laughs> Remember uh, me, baby? Signed baseball card. Right. <laughs> never that's forget. Gonna, you that's going to sell one day. <laughs> you gave him a signed baseball card so he can always remember you and uh, probably sell that one day when you actually do become famous. He would legitimately do that. So. That's smart. Smart. That's just economics. Yep. So, hey, I'm gonna go use the bathroom, so I'll be right back. Yeah, I think we we can take we can take like a little a little bathroom break. I yeah. a little unmute break. Hey John, hey CJ, how are you guys doing? Oh, you know, just here, been chilling. Been chilling. Been chilling. All right, unpause the report. All right. So, yep, missing cat. Uh. Da -da -da -da. Nice roll there. Private meeting. Ah, okay. So with the info Yoon gave you and leads found by his wise scouts, you're able to locate and finish off a good half of the Axe gang by hunting them down, making them retreat to a casino bunker under a dilapidated gas station, like an illegal casino den. Oh, not this. Which you okay, guys filled with gas despite the fact that they were just regular gambling people down there lit it on fire and just sat on the lid and let them all burn to death and die Who, whose bright idea was it to commit war crime i think it was me i also <laughs> think it was you it's a very surreal thing to do i think it was like 
They're underground. There must be no ventilation down there. <laughs> Time to finish them. So, uh, with half of Axe Gang dealt with, you guys check their stuff and you find a clue on where to head off to next. I'm sorry that uh, I'm going to keep you on this point here for a second. Yep, go for it. There was one guy who we let get out, and then we murdered him by kicking him in the ball so fucking hard. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. And then you, we you, threw him in. You rolled max damage for him. <laughs> and then we threw him in. Killed him. I think he was just a regular game. dude, though. He wasn't even an axe king, though. Yep, he was a regular <laughs> dude. It's <laughs> a regular ass dude, and you fucking. <laughs> uh, knowing what I know now, the gambler deserved it, bro. He yeah. really did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gamblers are the fucking worst, dude. <laughs> Anything All for that fuck. one more game. Oh, but I, <laughs> I was in Foxwood, like, yesterday. Don't tell me that. I was a gambler. I did You're the horrible! Slot, I did the slot machine for, for, a little, for a little bit. Oh, that's fine. Whatever. Slot players are pretty bad, but, like... Oh yeah, it was dog shit. <laughs> it was, it was yeah, dog shit. my dad. How do people love it so much? I don't fucking get my it. My dad put in twenty dollars on this machine that had like a fucking panda JPEG moving, and it was like, like lucky panda gold coin yada yada, uh, and he like lost all twenty dollars within the span of like six spins. There's only one machine I really want to play at 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 the at, uh my casino. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a it's a machine. Ooh. So yeah, so it has like cutscenes. I don't know from which Silent Hill, but like it's it's basically it's an entirely Silent Hill thing. That's and I fucking and it's so cool. But you can't. And also, there's machines that are made by Konami, apparently. Yeah, Pachinko machines. Yeah, Pachinko. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like I just realized today. I'm like, man, like half of this slot section is made by Konami. That's fucking wild. Yeah. Where's my Tekken games? <laughs> Tekken <laughs> slot machines. Give it to me. I mean, for the longest time, Silent Hill was relegated to only the the pachinko machine stuff, which pissed off fans for a while. Ooh, uh, give me Yu-Gi-Oh slot machines. Oh god! Oh yeah. hell yeah! You got a you got a dual Kaiba. <laughs> dual Kaiba, and it's like it's like you have to hit at least like I don't know four Dark Magicians to hit the bonus round. <laughs> oh, but you keep on getting good Karibos, dude. You keep on getting Karibos. Go right. Karibos! Anyway, All right, keep on going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you find you found a clue off of their ashen body, uh, their ashes and their bodies, um, to a uh, seems they've repurposed an old museum to be a base of sorts. And since they're, you know, the ex members of Hook Office, they obviously have to have some necromantic bullshit going along. So they have a few undead skulls just acting as cameras on pikes. Uh, and as you're looking through this courtyard near nighttime trying to figure out how to get in there thing that i failed to bring up earlier the sweepers until halfway through your tenure of being in office would always emerge at like the moment it's night and at that point everybody has to stay inside or be in a nest because otherwise you're going to get fucking got by the ghoulies but <laughs> the, ghoulies. the head seemed to somehow made it so the sweepers will only come out during a period of time now between 3 30 and 5 a.m before they were like nor you know regular predators they would stalk their prey they wouldn't go whole hog but now because of that the moment is 3 30 it is a wailing frenzy of they're out there you are out there they will instantly grab you. There is no hesitation. There is no toying around. Anything that is organic or can be consumed will be consumed. No trace of you will be left. So it's a lot more voracious now. And I bring that up because as you guys were in the dark, nearing nighttime, and by nighttime I don't mean 3 a.m. I mean like, you know, 8 a.m., 8 p.m. Uh, behind you appeared to be a pair of sweepers that emerged from the dark. Cirilla, putting in her sweeper talk, and also panic nine one one calling mom, aka Pierre, to fucking help her out. Um, you managed to convince them to uh, not do anything to you guys because one of them was very much just, oh man, nobody would know. We should eat them, and you were like, hey, no, wait, please no. I'm yeah, I I'm you. I'm a friend, 
and they they lack the comprehension to understand that if something can speak their language it's their family but you're clearly prey so that like fucked with their brain and you use that to their advantage to make them think that you were just a baby sweeper who was very lost um very ugly baby sweeper <laughs> yep. who was very lost um they helped you out by clearing out the security cameras and in addition to that also weakened up the first half of the beginning of your reception against axe gang uh afterwards you had to come clean that you're not a baby sweeper because they were about to take you back home and you know that's not gonna go good for you so you had to convince them and you actually did roll pretty damn well and managed to make them acknowledge that hey friend friends can be friends and food but this friend is not a food this friend is a friend who just happens to have the potential to be food something along those lines um you know, went through the museum found out that they used to house some sort of artifact of a failed rebellion here it's all propaganda stuff you guys didn't care much for you're here to finish off axe gang there were some pretty faulty turrets that you guys handled you headed it on down to the vault where axe gang's final stand happened and despite all of her training lenny once again survives by the skin of her teeth as you guys finish off Axe Gang. Do you remember how it went down? I remember we were out in the hall and we heard them cheer, Axe Gang, Axe yep. Gang. Axe yep, they're, they're <laughs> hyping themselves up. <laughs> yep, they're hyping themselves up like, we can do it, we're Axe Gang. And you guys came down and you're like, you tossed one of the axes from like a dead member that you found onto the ground and you were basically like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> we're doing this. I think halfway through the fight, they realized, oh, fuck, we're going to die. So they tried to focus on your weakest link, which, mm, yeah. which did happen. And for the love of God, Lenny just doesn't die. She Never. doesn't do too she much can't. damage. She just doesn't she die. Fucking can't. She's immortal, bro. True She's going to outlive us. We also got a... Uh... Do you remember the names of the sweepers? Uh, yeah, I have it written down here. I was going to get to it because they come back. Yeah, in a hard-fought fight, which Lenny survives by the skin of her teeth, again, all caps, you beat Axe Gang. The Sweepers from, return, from before return, oh no, this is where you, you tell them the truth. When they try to take you back, you convince them that you're, you're not done, you need to go kill more things. And they were like, oh, okay, young tyke, head pat, head pat. Uh, so, Ida, I-D-A, is the young adult Sweeper, the, the lanky one, and Bray was an adult sweeper who was her guardian brother parent like somebody looking after her who was part of the family um you guys ex you guys it's a very rough thing to say Cecil um uh, and Cynthia kind of just sat in the corner eating glue while Cirilla tried to talk her way out of you guys not being uh liquefied and slurped up um which works out that's where you know you you hit him with the whole oh friends are you know like like fish are friends not food kind of deal hit her with the oki yep hit her with the oki just kept on going Oof. so you're given a small piece of uh ida that allows her to like find a way to you uh because you guys have her curiosity and bray's wordless approval they also uh bray wants to make sure you guys are safe so he lets you know that there are these things called worms so i believe he took a chalkboard and murdered all of your ears as he drew quotation marks what these worms were which are these large towering grotesque like like look they look like big old leeches essentially uh those things hunt young sweepers younger than Ida, but you know they're out there and if they can hunt them uh they could hunt you and that's not good that's not cash money 
um especially with the fact that there's there's been you know they feel that there are more in the area than there were before like they can sense that there's something wrong around them uh you also discover that axe gang there's three gangs there's axe chain and stray um bottom line uh all three of them were expanding you guys initially thought that chain and axe were working with stray turns out uh axe and stray are working together chain is unaffiliated with them and is just there to uh take opportunity of the mess that those two are making um so they're not really working with each other you decide to prioritize going after stray because those are the big dogs get it the stray dogs <laughs> anyways you guys decide to have pizza that night you clean up and in the morning you uh as you guys go to go brush your teeth some of you brushing your teeth some of you not brushing your teeth yet you find a glitched out invitation to the library um with no explanation as to why you're being summoned it is it feels off it can't be broken or destroyed you guys try to to tear it up um but you guys uh you guys were seemingly being told hey come over which you guys did uh and when you arrived let me pull up let me pull up when you arrived uh angela was very much um confused as to why the fuck you guys are here in your sleepwear uh, especially because you have not it's not you weren't she didn't send out no invitation i just think they remember that she was hostile oh yeah because it's like what the fuck you guys are invading she full full force and it took um your your boy roland coming in telling her hey maybe don't kill them try let's try and figure out what is uh What's the deal here? And uh, you guys with him managed to convince her to lay off you guys and allow you to exist as she delved into learning why you're here. Uh, specifically, uh, da, da, da. she had to consult with the light, whatever that means. So more of the floors of the library were made known to you. Some are still asleep or not yet ready, as Roland had put it. Uh, as you guys were heading on up to Roland's floor, uh, Cynthia, you were curious and tried to enter the floor of religion, but you uh, were very much simply told, you're not ready yet. You tried to take your steps into this place, but your force of will just could not overcome this pressure around you. Nice black screen. Oh, god damn it. No. Lightning, token vision, fog exploration. There you go. Haha. -ha. So holy. I really like the little like string lights that they have. It's very nice looking. But yeah, you guys um head on up to Roland's floor and I'm realizing that I actually there's no there's no just general thing for Roland, so uh, here we go. Just to give a vibe of what Roland's floor looks like. Um, a mess. We're battling. Literally a mess. Yeah, you're battling. Oh, let me put you on the battle map real quick. You actually see this, right? Yeah. Okay, I need to like go through and figure out which scenes have vision and which ones don't, because for some reason, I have no idea why some do and some don't. Like, you also missed a large part of the story where we asked people what they were being paid here. Oh yeah, he did. Out, yeah, not it's paid. True. Nope, not paid. Like, what's money? It yeah. wasn't. It wasn't money. It was like, what would I do with money in here? Oh, I it's not a get book. Bro, we should introduce capitalism. Capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the thing you were like, man, you guys should unionize. <laughs> you know? Let's talk about bartering power. Let's talk about supply and demand. Uh, so you guys hung out with Roland, vibing with him. Um, he gave you guys some drinks, uh, by pulling them out of some random books here and there. Um, they were nice and cold. 
He made an awful joke about, look, here's a bear, and he pulls out bear-branded beer, and all of you were like, wow, yeah. So why you deserve to be in here, Roland? I think Sissa was like, bro, it's like 8 a.m. What are you doing, Drink? <laughs> and, and he was like, oh, so is that is that what time it is right now? Because, uh, what's time? You know? Man, you guys should really get, like, watches or something. <laughs> That's why they should unionize, man. Serve unionize the, the times. They really should Honestly. unionize the times. Eight hour work days. More like eight Paid hours. breaks. Eight hours you're not working days. Hey, yo. Wow. So after you guys vibe and hang out, Angela calls you guys back after consulting with the light. You should be able to fucking see the scene. I swear if you can't. Okay. There we yes. go. You can, yeah, yeah. All right. So... Uh, after considering things, you guys shouldn't be here, and yet the library has called you here, not for hostility purposes. So she apologizes for her past hostilities towards you guys, and offers you a deal, or rather a mutually beneficial arrangement. You guys are to act as vanguards, parentheses, of the library. What this means is you would be allowed to tap into the power of the library, both you, the initial pact makers, and all of those affiliated with you in a, in a deep emotional sense. AKA, the three of you signed your signed away on this. Lenny didn't have to because she's attached to you guys like that, therefore she's part of the deal now, if that makes sense. Lenny does have a choice. Yep. AKA all agency from <laughs> Yeah, AKA if you make friends with people and make good strong like, you know, attachments or whatever, they become part of this deal. Um so in exchange for being able to tap into the in, you you're allowed to tap into the power of the library in exchange the light from your kills will flow through you into the library and upon your own deaths, your light will also join the library. You're told that it's going to be an inevitability because you have light within you. You will eventually have to fall to the library. So for the time being, it is a, hey, make the most of this right now. Maybe we'll see what happens later down the line. There's no, she makes it very clear there is no, if there's a way to have you guys be here without having is if there's a way to have your light be here without you guys having to be fucking killed then they'll do that option instead but she makes she makes no effort in hiding the fact that yes if nothing can be done then your light will join one way or another either by the hands of the library killing your killers if you guys were to fall in the overworld or by the library's hands themselves and you're Anthony you guys figured, made this remark. Hmm? We are the warriors of light, right? Yeah, you're the warriors of light. Uh, so, you guys decided, hey, you debated on it. If it's inevitable, you might as well make the you might as well put this to your benefit. And in addition to that, Angela added an extra thing because some of you were concerned about being made to serve after dying. She essentially said that, you know, those who want to come back and serve can. Those of you who want to stay asleep can stay asleep. So you have that liberty. Not a lot of people are given that choice. Uh, but to finish up on this, you guys would have to uh, tether yourselves to each floor of the library. And when you're done, she'll send you back home. So with that in mind, uh, me... Where the fuck is, uh, where is it? Your boy Roland shows back up. Um, having, you know, he understands the deal you guys are, you're getting now. And, uh, basically he's like, oh, these are the, uh, current floors that you can attune to. You guys are gonna have to, as more floors awaken, attune to them as well. Um, so you guys explore and get acquainted with the five librarians that you're able to interact with at this time. Uh, Roland tells you guys to meet him up later because Angela has stuff for him to do. So you guys go ahead and find Malkuth instead. Part of me wants to just 
go find her fucking heart and just plop it out. Do it. Yeah, it's just hold on. I just don't know. I think I'd have to make. I think I'd have to make her and then do it. So let me see. There's a way to do that. Because I can do this with Angela. I can do that and then delete her and then there's her art. Wait, can I just right click and do that? Oh, I can. Okay, hold on. Yeah, sadly, I don't think there's a way for me to just show a picture without having to import it first and attaching it to something. Would you rather I do the full recap and then do that or no? Like, do it now. You just do it now. It's not a big deal. Right. We'll take a. We'll enjoy Malkuth music as I figure this out. Yeah, with the power of editing, right? Oh, shit. You're right. I should punch the recording. I don't even have a recording software for this. I'm honestly. I never unpaused the recording. Who knows how long ago that was? Oh, boy. Yeah. I wonder when that was. I think that was when I was doing the card art for the uh, the librarians. Oh, that wasn't that bad. I guess it does ex it does skip past your what's happening to your characters, like personal story wise. But who cares? Um, I mean, I do. Anyways, thank you. You, uh, Cynthia. You're climbing up the ladder. You're preparing to set up a rope. The the grate above you is very cold. And you hear this young man talking to these creatures. Before long, the creatures are broken free by him. As you can see, they're chained up and in confinement. And they descend down uh, the, the grate as it's their only escape plan. Which just so happens to mean that they run into you. Um, you heard them. Uh, they were given a very clear instruction. One that you 100% for sure did not mistake for anything else. Uh, you heard they were instructed to kill MOM. And it seems by happenstance and bad luck, uh, they stumbled into you immediately. Uh, Sissel... You realized what you were going up against. Uh, let me, I, I can actually, hold on, I can keep doing the token art thing. Aha. Uh -huh. At least I think I can. Uh, is it under assets? It is under assets. Not past me, already did this. Uh, you knew what you were fighting. Mm. Uh, these are the worms that the sweepers were concerned that you'd be facing up against and a big part of you is very grateful that they seemed to be emaciated to some very high degree um you guys engage them and do the mistake of killing uh two of them in one turn and not finishing off the third because uh through their power of friendship uh, they gained a plus four to all of their attack rolls because two of their friends had died. And oh, you yeah. guys just... Yeah, they did piercing. I remember, Sissel, you got fucked up. And uh, due to the power of just your fucking determination and also drugs, I think. No, no drugs were involved this time. You uh, were about to finish it off. However, as you moved to finish the last one off, the library around you began to melt because whenever you engage into a fight, the area around you momentarily becomes the library. Uh, the fight is concluding. The power is doing the link as it's, it's over. A, uh, a dark figure obscured in ever-moving body, body wraps and dark sulfurous, sulfur sand uh, manifests uh, next to the creature. Like this, there's a whirlwind of desert sand and and just like it's just not good. Um, you try to, you know, once again not have a kill stolen from you, but the figure beats you off, producing a blade at your throat, telling you to like silently telling you to back off. The blade is uh, hued and dark orange, 
and the creature and the figure just sink into the sand and just disappear. Uh, Sissel, however, recognizes that blade as a very high-tier Stigmatech weapon that few high-grade fixers own. And you know two high-grade fixers that own those weapons. But moving past that, you guys head on up into the Tradog's House of Operation, and you put a stop to their Soak operation. You put a stop to everything there. You take critical information, dis you disrupt and destroy their security. You wipe the place out of all stray dogs, and you make a getaway before anybody learns of your involvement. There was also a very advanced cutscene there that happened as well, if you all remember. It was great. Yep, I still have that clip. Um, yeah, it's, the, it's my favorite YouTube video of all time, actually. Yep. What you guys learned is it seems that the stray dogs were feeding people to the worms people who owed them money or people who they just wanted gone uh, in order to turn them into silk which was then sold to the kurokumo clan and they're off to go make a delivery uh at that moment so you picked a very good time to strike uh given all the info you uncover there's also a mole within this why isadora and julia pull some strings to allocate resources to help you in your mission to finish everything off because there's no way you can handle all of the leaders and the like 13 thugs that they still have remaining but they do it in a way where it doesn't become a why operation so you guys will still get full credit as if you did it by yourselves as a sort hey. of uh you know hey fucking thank you for giving us this info we'll put this under the rug while we investigate this uh and because of that you guys with the help of the scouts that they had on hand face off against the stray dogs leaders in the library or well the scene around you becomes the library same diff there's a before that there's a car fight scene and everything a lot of chaos i think cynthia grapple hooked on top of their car and then was shooken off and was just dangling on the roof of their car trying to pull back up and uh i i think during the whole time though uh sissel you were just thinking what the fuck is her plan what is she doing why is she there <laughs> and i think cynthia you did not have a plan you just thought it would be cool it almost worked yeah, it definitely almost worked. But the fight broke out. You guys came up on top. Um, which was a very rough fight for Sissel, specifically. Because uh, you had to keep getting revived, knocked down, revived, knocked down. But in the end, you knocked them down, and they didn't get back up. You guys got a lot of broken ribs and teeth with that fight but you wrapped it up um oh there's a big thing i i accidentally skipped over um after julia and isadora pulled the strings sis uh, cirilla calls you guys and informs you that she's coming back because she finished up what she had to do at home she found some bladed brass knuckles in her father's basement and learned through the kobold who was left to man the chop shop kind of poorly um that uh they left and she doesn't know how things are going she asks how things are going you tell her things are not going good she says oh no um but cirilla comes back to help you guys finish off the stray dogs and afterwards uh you guys do one final group hug and Cynthia uh, and Cecil, you guys watch us. Uh, Cirilla leaves you guys. And that is the end of part three. And that is where we are done. That's, that was a that's, lot. 